Uh, and oh, ah, it's my kryptonite. <laughs> and she will not be present when I do the super gluing. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Imperfectly Me Crafts, where craft beer and handcrafts combine, uh, occasionally in a messy way. <laughs> Hopefully not this time. This is for Grumpy Troll Brew Pub in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. I am going to ma be making them a shadow box. It's a beer craft! I need a beer! This is from Short Fuse Brewing Company, and I had Lindsay with me in Home Brews Number One, our wheat beer challenge. Short Fuse did the gummy bear wheat. It was really, really good. This one is Hop Cycle. Now, this is a really fun series they did where they tried the same recipe, but they did different hops paired together to see how they work together. So this one for Hop Cycle is their Amarillo versus Chinook. It's a hazy IPA. I didn't want to do a hard pour because I can drink faster if I don't. <laughs> Ooh! You know, that is not nearly as hazy as I was expecting. Let's give this a sniff here. And heavy hop nose right off the bat. Pineapple, orange, a little grapefruit as well. This is gonna be juice bomb, I think. I may have gotten a little foam on my nose. Don't do that. Don't sniff the foam. It's not good. Doesn't work. You're doing it wrong. Penalty box, no drink. Oh. No! <laughs> You're just trying to steal my beer. Except let's see how it is. That was mostly foam. <laughs> Ooh. Juice mom. I got the Chinook right of, right off the bat. Strangely enough, it hit the left side of the tongue more than the right. That was different. Your chair is crooked. <laughs> Do I look straight on camera? <laughs> How's he doing holding that? <laughs> you get more of the fruit and juice flavors from the scent, more so than the sip. The sip, you're getting more of the hop. There is a sweetness barely there, just enough to make it not too drying, which is actually really nice. It evens it out really well. This beer a lot. So the box that I picked up had decoration in it already. They had wire through the back. Just went in with uh, needle nose pliers and cut these wires so that I can pull them out of the holes. However, I did find, hey, there's holes in here. So I will have to contend with that. Yeah, you've run into hiccup number one with me. And not the, the fun, drinky hiccups. This is the... <laughs> my normal... my normal crafting hiccups. <laughs> got my beer. Got my white spray paint to start. Take a drink. While you shake. This is important. The two have to go together. I'm gonna be spray painting the inside of this whole thing. First coat of the white is done. Need to give it the proper number of minutes to dry. What? Always read your instructions. Whatever your paint says, you follow those instructions. Cheers, everyone. You can go back to your room now. So after our first coat of white paint, I realized there are just some bumpies there from those holes. I am gonna have to go in with my handy dandy little sandpaper square. Sand those down. I'm gonna fill them in. This is Crayola Air Dry Clay. Super cheapy, like kids level, but it works really well for stuff like this. It doesn't need to be perfect, because once it dries, I'm gonna sand it down again. Make it nice and smooth. By the way, this stuff works if you live in apartments and have to fill holes on your walls too. But you do have to sand and paint over it, so be aware of that. I might actually have Chu do the sanding for me tomorrow while I'm at work, if he's cool with that. Only if I can use the uh, crazy glue. You don't get to use the crazy glue. You never get to use the crazy glue again. 
But if you wouldn't mind sanding this down and uh, maybe giving it another coat. Choose taking over the craft tomorrow for a little bit. No. <laughs> Remember, we are gifting this to someone, so you be good. <laughs> Understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We ran into a snag. It's cool. Sets us back a little bit, but we'll be all good to go. I'm gonna finish this up because it's delicious. Uh, I'm gonna let the clay dry and I'll see ya. Well, Chew will see you first tomorrow. Cheers, everyone. Day two, Chew already started with you and sanded it down, got it all pretty. Take a look. <laughs> We're gonna be doing the back in black. And now I wanna sing the song. We're gonna paint the whole back and all the sides in the black color. Let the first coat dry and we'll see how it looks in a bit. So we've got our white on the inside. We've done our black on the outside. Now for this front edge, because I don't wanna get black inside where the white is, I'm actually gonna be using one of my marker pens. <laughs> Welcome to my upstairs. I have the box here. I've checked that I have the top at the top because that is important. The Norway flag has an off-center cross of white and blue on a red background. I'm gonna have to off-center the cross. So first I need to measure the width of my surface area. Nine and a quarter inches. A white stripe, a blue stripe, and a white stripe. I was thinking of doing a half inch for the white and one inch for the blue. Arm of the cross will take up two inches. Five inches of red, two inches of white and blue, two inches of red. So make a mark at five inches, five and a half, six and a half, and seven. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So I have those. These are gonna to wanna to be centered. So three and a half, four, five, five and a half. Same thing on this side. Draw the lines where I want them. From the top, we have, all this will be red, all these will be white, and then the blue cross in the middle. I am going to start with the blue. I love these paint pens, but for some reason, every pack I got, the blue was not working great. I am going to attempt with these three that I had before. However, I did buy another one, a larger one, just in case these three are just not playing nice. I'll be using a pad of paper to do an ink test real quick. And that was the problem I kept having with them. You press down for a second and you get a pool of paint. And you have to spread it around as fast as you can before it dries, which it does dry fast. I am not feeling that pen. Pen number two! And this paint pen suddenly started working perfectly. I'm gonna move on to the red. Open up my Craftsmart chisel tip premium multi-surface oil-based paint pen in red. When you first open them, you see how the tip is yellow there? None of the paint has gotten into this tip yet because it's brand new. I shook it up to get the paint moving. You press this in to get the paint flowing and until it gets a little further down I can show you, but you keep pressing it in, pointed down. Oh, see, the paint's starting to come out now. I'm gonna move my finger so I don't get covered and switch to a piece of paper to finish that. But now it's fully saturated and you're ready to paint with it. I need this to dry. I will be marking where the battery pack will need to come out. From there, just a little bit wider. When using sharp tools, always move the blade away from your hand and away from your body. Because if your hand slips, you're gonna cut yourself. Don't screw that up. I don't want anyone getting hurt. <sighs> Squeeze. 
score. This needs to be just a hair wider. Hoping I can just shave away some. Just where that cord is. That's the problem. But getting it out would be impossible. <sighs> Gotta go up to the top. That's too bad. <laughs> All right, just last bit. Ha. Oh. See how it works now. Just firm enough to hold it. But you can pull it out easy. I think I got it. It is time to clean up this ginormous mess and put away that because I don't want to use it anymore. Huh. Next, we'll be placing the lights. I am going to use tape to hold down each time around with the lights and then I'm gonna super glue them to the inside of the box. I'm gonna take a minute and use my art gun eraser and take off those pencil marks. So I went and got my paper painters tape. So I've done the first round of super glue. I have to allow that to fully dry. Oh, and I need to get a beer. This is day three of this craft and I haven't had a beer yet. So let's get on that. I have one of the beers from Grumpy Troll Brew Pub, who we are making this for. This is local, I'm assuming Brig, but it might be pronounced differently. I'm not sure. I just know that it's a Pilsner and this is a pint and six ounces. This is a very large bottle. It's what we call in Detroit a deuce deuce. This is what I call round one. Yeah, because it's 22 <laughs> ounces, deuce deuce. 22 ounces, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is what I call, you know, getting started. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm looking here, I am seeing some major sediment in the bottom of this, which I was not anticipating with a Pilsner, so I'm gonna give this a quick roll. I don't wanna shake it up too much, otherwise it'll explode all over me and, well, that's no fun. I am going to move that safely out of the way. Here we go. Ah, it did not explode, but she brought a towel just in case. I'm gonna give this a pour. Oh, that's such a pretty sound. Teensy bit hazy, which I kind of expected after seeing the sediment down there in the bottom of the bottle. Soapy head on it. I see a lot of slow moving carbonation. It's a little darker than I was anticipating, so I'm looking forward to checking this out. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, Chew has his light. Oh, that is much lighter than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel pretty proud of that, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're so cute. Oh, I smell flowers. Lavender and clover. I smell, and violet. A little bit of breadiness as well. We're gonna give it a try. Cheers, everyone. Oh, wow, that is a beautiful Pilsner. This one wasn't on tap when we were there, so I didn't get to try it. That's why I had to have a bottle to bring home because I do love myself a good Pilsner. Oh, there goes Chew stealing it. <laughs> but that is a lovely, yeah. Floral, green, fresh, yeah. beautiful flavor. That's a good one. So refreshing, so light. There's like a tiny bit of creaminess at the end. This beer is absolutely freaking beautiful. What's the name of it? Uh, this is Local <laughs> Brig. If anyone knows how to pronounce that word, that would be awesome because I have no clue. I think that's how it. Grumpy Troll would say the local bridge that they live under. You think? That could be yeah. cool. Maybe it is local bridge, but it's like pronounced differently yeah. for... Um, for troll. Uh, no, for Grumpy Troll. For, that's how trolls pronounce it. Okay. It might also be a different language. True. 
<laughs> Norwegian language uh, would be my guess. I would have to double check that. So if I'm totally in the wrong, sorry. Um, this is absolutely gorgeous. If you get over to Grumpy Troll, you must try the Pilsner because holy crackers, I just love this. <laughs> First round of glue has dried. I'm gonna try taking the tape off and see if those hold steady. That one needs to wait. And while this marinates, I am going to see about doing the front bit. So for the front, we're using foam board. I'm going to have this going down inside the hole. I need to cut it to the proper width that it fits only the inside edge nine and a quarter so if i do a nine and a quarter square that should fit beautifully right into it nine and a quarter i'm gonna go just a teensy bit over because i'd rather have too much and shave it down than not have enough so i'm going to go ahead and cut with the utility knife there we go but I just have to eyeball this and see if it fits. Oh, perfect. It'll just barely slide in. For this piece, the design I had in mind was those little houses, um, all the peak houses, probably a little bit lower, and a couple of the taller ones will have little windows so you can see through. And then a border that goes around to hide the lights. For the design, I'm going to take a piece of construction paper and sketch it out first. So when I start doing the houses, I want them to fully cover the battery pack. And I want them to come up to just about the blue as the highest. How far along is that? Five inches tops. Here to here. Thinking about an inch and a half per house. How, many, how much does that give me? That gives one, two, Three, four, five, six houses. One and a half. Three. This would be one and a half, but I'm adding that extra quarter inch. One and a half. And then one and a half. Third one's gonna be a little bit wider than the others to make up for that quarter inch difference. Now I have to find the center of each of these for the point of the house. I need a perfect uh, square edge that I can use to make these rooftops. There's one. Make the next one a little higher. Then I need a border that hides the lights. I want the border to come in about three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna be cutting out the center section. Okay. There is my outline of the little houses. Next question, does it hide our battery pack? It certainly does. Let's get this one traced under the black. Is it lined up proper at the top? Uh, yes. And figure out those windows next. Where do I want the windows? I want one here, definitely. So I need a small square shape that I can trace. How big? Three quarters of an inch tall and a half inch wide. So three quarters of an inch tall. Now we can go an inch. Cut it out. One there. One down here, one here, and one here, and tree 
use them. Nearly finished. We're getting there. Okay. All right, here comes the crazy part. I'm gonna get my beer safely out of the way because I'm gonna have elbows flying over here. darn windows without screwing that up. Let's see that that go all the way through just barely. Come on out of there. Just doing a little sanding on this edge over here. Oh hey we are on to day four finishing up this lovely craft. I have my battery pack here. I want the switch facing out but I need to put batteries in. Switch facing the back. Press that down into the hole so it stays put. All of my super glue is officially dry and my wire is stationary. Next, I'll be placing the frame. Finishing touch for this guy. I am just going to place a couple drips of the super glue around the edges just to hold her down. Don't touch the super glue. Don't touch your hair after touching super glue. Don't touch anything ever. That's just how it's gotta be. Next step, wait for the glue to dry. And then we will turn this baby on and see how she looks in the dark. Ah, what the heck, I'm gonna turn it on now. I wanna see. Oh, it's turned on. Oh, I just stuck my thumb in the glue. <laughs> I knew I should have waited. I give myself very good advice, but I very seldom follow it. Here we go. Oh, cute. It's a good thing I checked this out because those edges where you can see through it, that's gonna be an issue for me. Oh, got it. Once the super glue dries, I will go back over it with my black paint pen and the paint pen will be on the super glue and will cover the light coming through. The super glue is now dry. Let me turn the lights back on. There we go. And I still see light coming through at a couple little spots. I'm gonna turn off this upper light so I can see it very clearly. And I will be using my black paint pen to cover up those spots in the dark. Join me in the dark. Now I need to let that dry. True crafting is trial and error. You try something, see how it works. I would equate it a lot to, well, home brewing, I think. Home brewing is a similar process. You try something. If it doesn't work, the next time you try something else. So, it's all a creative pursuit, and the crossover will exist regardless. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my completed shadow box for Grumpy Troll Brew Pub in Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. So we have the Norway flag behind, we have the cute little houses, uh, we have the lights. I think this turned out pretty good. It's not perfect, but that's not me, so that works. Yeah, I'm really happy with it, and I'm looking forward to giving it to them. I, I hope they like it. But thank you for joining me on this journey, and I had a ton of fun. Next week is our Halloween episode, so do stay tuned for that next Thirsty Thursday. Uh, we'll be going out in our Halloween finest to film at Nightshade and Dark's Pandemonium Brewing Company. Best name 
ever in Waukegan, Illinois, and we had so much fun. We got a fun new choose challenge, and then I'll be showing you the craft for them. Thanks for joining me and uh, join, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, because Chew's here too. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Hopefully we'll see you around again. Cheers, everyone. Um, I'm going to sneeze, though. Now you can do what you were doing before. Uh, no, I can't. I had sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to uh, you review that. <sighs> you having fun, Chew? <laughs> I gotta have some beer. Uh oh, Chew's coming. And you can eat it. I don't think you should eat it, Chew. Oh, it's not like Play Doh. I don't think you should eat Play Doh either. <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> I know we're a little late on that train, but probably shouldn't eat the Play-Doh. If I can get it open. I never can get these open. I got that open really easy. <laughs> it takes a little time to dry super glue. Which is funny, because when Chew and I got it all over our hands, it dried really fast. I'm putting that in totally the wrong way though. <laughs> and I do have one white spray pen, uh, pen uh, paint pen. I do have that. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, I am stopping for tonight because I'm getting cranky. <laughs> it also has the wax top on it, so I will be popping this open right now. Maybe. Quit laughing, Chew. Somebody forgot to take the wax off. Well, how do you take the wax off, really? Well, this will go in bloopers, won't it? You can't okay. open a beer. How Guess... are you gonna move the feathers? Well, I mean, I... Oh, I should have needle nose pliers. <laughs> You're mean. But you know, I don't have to put that in the description because not everybody who buys a box is gonna have wired things yep. into it. But, but yeah. That makes you feel good. <laughs> Just drink my beer. Chu made me pout. Tell him mean things in the comments. <laughs>